right. And I know I gotta wait for this microphone to chill out for a second, but what's up, guys? Rick, Warriors Way. I am going to be doing something very different because my Andrea, my love, is all the way out into Texas right now. And because she's in Texas right now, I'm going to see if we can have her jump on with us. And we're going to do our very first duet thing. And then what we want to do is take questions from you guys and see if we can help translate what is your man saying and what's your guy doing. So if you guys haven't seen any of our videos or what we do, this will give you a pretty good idea of what's going on with us and then whatever we can do to help you guys through some of the tough things that you guys are trying to figure out. And that's really essentially what it is when I see all of my guys working on what my guys are working through is it's not necessarily that you guys aren't willing to do the work. It's not usually that guys aren't willing to sacrifice. Now, those guys exist, but for the most part, most guys want to do best for their women. And so, let me see if this works. I don't know if she's doing that. So, guys are trying to do better, but the thing is, is we're taught backwards how to do it. And it's hard to communicate what it is I'm trying to get across to you so you're both on the same page. It's not about what guys will give, because guys will give anything for their girl. They just want you to be happy. But a lot of times, people don't know what happiness is or what makes them happy. And so we're just kind of shooting in the dark on each other. And so think about this. I'll give you an example. I know a lot of people like the love language video. So I'll get in this. Hold on. Babe, I don't know if it's working. I see she's doing stuff. I'm really trying to help out, guys. I don't know if it's working, though. In any case, what's happening is people are showing each other love the best that they can, but they don't know how to articulate what it means for them to be able to receive the love the way that they want it. And so people get into relationships, and when they get into relationships, they give the other person authentic, good, clean love. They love people exactly the way that they want to be loved. Now, the problem is, if the other person doesn't understand what that means, then it's going to be one of those things where the other person rejects your love. They start telling you, your love isn't good, but they don't say what it is. Um, so it's like if you were to go to a restaurant and say, like, I would like a drink, and they go, I'll get you, in, I'll get you a drink, you know, um, what kind of drink do you want? And you're like, okay, what do you got? And you're like, all right, you want some orange juice? And they're like, I don't like orange juice. I don't want orange juice. No. All right. Do you want uh, Pepsi? And they're like, no, I know I don't want a Pepsi. They're like, okay, do you want a Bloody Mary? They're like, no, I don't want a Bloody Mary. And it just keeps going and going. And the more that they're like, you know, you want a beer? And they're like, no, I don't want a beer. You're not really good at this job, are you? And you're like, those are things that I like to drink, but you seem to like something different to drink. And if that's the case, please tell me what you want to drink and I'll happily go get you the drink that you want. But they don't know what drink they want, so they keep saying, just get me the drink that I want without knowing what it is, and then their love is again rejected. You don't, you're not loving me right. You're not doing it right. That's not the kind of love I want. You don't know me very well. You're not doing it right. And they'll get you the drink, but just say you want water with lemon or whatever it is that you want, and I'll go get it. And so, in essence, what you're doing when you're loving the way that you like to be loved is you're just kind of shooting blindly and just hoping, hoping that you can do what that person actually likes. That's a very frustrating love strategy. And it starts going really wrong when they start losing faith in you because you just keep getting drinks that they don't like, but they never tell you what kind of drink would actually make them happy. And that ends up being a lot of people's relationships. People are really coming in with the right kind of love and not working. Yeah, babe, I see you on here. I, I can't invite you in. How do I do it? I see you on here, sweetheart. I really want you to, I really want you to jump in. But there's no option. I don't like that. Thanos knows. Thanks, Jake. You're awesome, bud. So, here's what we want to do. Here's what my goal is today. I, I'm, I'm bummed out. Uh, you see Love and Beauty 444, that's my Andrea, that's my girl. 
And I want her to be on here with us so she can try and catch up the questions. So, babe, I guess we're going to have to wing this a little bit differently. Not, a, not the best way we wanted to do this, but try and catch the questions and copy them and then just put them in. And I'm going to try and grab as many as I can. All right, Gnarly, let's see what you got for me, bud. Did you click multi-guest? Probably not, Jake. I probably didn't do that. Uh, let me try this interact button. What does this do? Poll Q&A lighting. That's not it. Uh, gift pause admin settings topics. Oh, she did. I don't know if I did. All right, yeah, so, man, you guys are so good. Look how good you guys are at this. I'm good at serving you for what you guys need. Gnarly, I'll get to your question in a second, but if I can get her on here, babe, can you do it? All right, I did a thing. I hope that it helps, babe. I hope that this is doing the thing for you guys. All right, until she gets that right, currently argument, I stumble across this. My wife and I have trouble arguing, and I feel trapped when I argue. All right, obviously there's a listening thing that's going on. So if you guys are arguing and you're feeling trapped, I'd probably need a little bit more information as to what type of trap do you feel like. Um, like when you feel trapped, do you feel like whenever you talk, you're constantly interrupted? Do you feel like... In some cases, there's women who will just outsmart you, and then you're just like, I don't even know where to go from this. Is it because it keeps stacking? Like, what is the thing that happens to make it so you're like, I don't really know <laughs> where to go with this. I'd have to know more information. But, shoot, I don't know how to pull anybody on in this thing. I'm happy to do it. Let's go, let's go crazy. Baby, are you doing a thing? Multi-guest? Viewers? Is she, I don't even see her on here. I didn't do it. Babe, are you even still on this thing? Okay. I'm just tired on and off. He knows he has mental, but I still care. I don't know what that means necessarily. What's up, Isaiah? Hey, Isaiah the Outlaw. You're just a good kid, man. Very likable. Your superpower is being very likable. Hey, babe, hit the thing. I hit multi guess, but it doesn't show you on here. I wonder if it has to be like you have a certain amount of likes or something, because I don't understand why I can't see you. I feel like an idiot on this thing. The technology is getting me. What are good ways to stop overthinking? All right, I'll take this one. This is Lazarock. Overthinking is a byproduct of advanced intelligence when it comes to... Um, in, when it comes to imagination and creativity, people who start going too deep into your imagination zone. <clears throat> so what ends up happening for people is that fear usually starts feeding in your imagination. And when this starts happening, you start creating multiple realities over and over again. So you start going like, oh, no, this could go wrong. Or what if they say this? Or what if this happens? And then if this happens, or I'll tell them this. And if they do this, I'm going to, you know what? And you'll get into entire arguments. You'll have whole fights with somebody. Or you'll have a whole debate um, for why you should get a raise. Or you're going to have an entire argument about why you want to do things like a certain way. And when you go and meet that person, very often it doesn't end up going that direction at all. And that person has no idea you just had 20 fights with them. Like, they have no idea that, like, you have already killed them twice in the argument. They don't even have any clue what they're walking into. And you go in, and you're ready to go. I'm ready to go. It's like, I've been, I've been ready for this conversation all day. And you bring it up, and they go, oh, yeah, don't worry about that. I'm totally cool. Hey, do you want to go get some pizza? And you're like, I was, I was ready to go. Why didn't it go that way? Wait, what? What you're doing is when you're overthinking all these things, you're creating alternate realities that aren't real. The problem is with that is that you have an advanced brain, which means you have all of the feelings associated in this imaginary lifestyle that you've created, this imaginary fight or world or whatever. So you still have all of these feelings building up from multiple scenarios that aren't really happening. This makes it so you start freaking yourself out over possibility and not really in an acceptance of reality. So this is why fear starts really getting people and anxiety starts overrunning them. I call this not having control of your superpower. So what really ends up happening is that 
your imagination starts taking over you and your power controls you. Your overactive imagination, all the overthinking, all the possibilities, all the things that aren't happening, they start to control you because you're not learning lessons from it. You're getting worried about it. You're freaking out about what's happening. And yes, yeah, same, same thing goes with like, they could be cheating, they could be doing this stuff. You start making up scenarios. The problem then goes to your imagination feeds these feelings, the feelings start to feed your belief system. Now you start believing because you have feelings that it's possible. Now that your belief system starts going in, I think they're cheating. I think they're doing this. I think they're gonna say this. I think they're gonna do this thing. And you start putting in and filling the gaps for the pieces that you don't have. Like, it seems like because someone else has done this, I am going to be seeing them do the same thing someone else has done. So I'll fill in all of the missing pieces that I don't have just so that that way they can go, like, I caught them. Like, some people think you caught them, you already got it, all that stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, I caught them. I know it. I know it. I've already seen it. I know what they're going to say. And anything they say is already a lie. I know they're going to lie because they don't want to get caught. I already know they won't count. So I'm going to go through their phone. I'm going to start doing this stuff. And you start making up all of these things when really they were like, yeah, I was in the bathroom. My phone died. You know, like whatever. <laughs> like, it's like really funny that you've gone through all this imaginary stuff. And so what I do when I train people for this and I train people how to do that is you are still going to have these multiple realities and scenarios that you create up. You have a high intelligence and you have a high creativity and you have a high imagination. Fear will try to pump in worst case scenarios. What you can then do is take these scenarios and you can learn life lessons from each one. This is a little bit of an advanced training, but it does make it so that each one of these now become a positive, like, okay, I learned about that, or that's really unlikely, but I could see how that could go that direction. And if this happens, that one at least I can prepare for. And so you narrow it down to like the top two, worst case scenario, three most likely things to happen. You learn from everything else, and then you have to get rid of those ones. And then when you've gotten to that point, now you're more prepared for the most likely bad outcomes. And let's be real, guys. The most likely bad outcomes maybe happens less than 1% of the time. So you prepare for your worst, but most likely it's not going to go that direction. This gives you clairvoyance. Now your superpower you're in control of, your imagination and your creativity. This way you can learn 10 times faster. It's the, the equivalent of like in the Matrix when he like plugs the thing in and he's like, I know Kung Fu. Like that whole thing. It's kind of like that. We can go like, all right, this could happen, but then I would just do this. If this could happen, all right, I can see that. I would have to be prepared for this, but it seems unlikely. This would happen. That's probably very likely, and so I should be prepared for everything. Like you can just use each experience now, not get overrun by your emotions attached to the experiences, learn life lessons, and then delete the stuff because it's not real, and then be prepared. That's what happens with my people who have crazy anxiety. Because now when you're overthinking and you're over anxious and all these things, it's because you don't have certainty or control over the actual reality of it. And now the make believe of it is taking over your, your whole entire system. That's crazy. It's crazy. It makes us, it makes us not who we are. It makes us not the way we, we really are inside. And so a very worn down, beat up and upset and angry and, and, and wanting to fight version of us shows up in reality. And the other person was never actually there for all of that. And so they think you lost your mind, but they don't know. They don't know what you've just been through. You just, you just had 20 fights. <laughs> Maya, go to bed and quit hitting so many H's. All right. So that's a really quick thing for what's happening when people are overthinking. And if you really start to practice, and this is why people work with me, is we practice. How do you control your strengths so your strengths don't control you? You're not messed up. And this is where people do get misdiagnosed. Just because you have an amazing ability to have a high creativity and high imagination doesn't mean you need drugs. You need training. And that's one of those things that 
when I work with guys, a lot of times they don't need the medication once they're trained because there's only trained and untrained people. Once you learn how to control your strengths, your strengths don't control you. And that's just one of the things I've had to learn also through some pretty traumatic things is how do I take something that people consider is some, some type of a disability or a diagnosis and I use that as a strength to make it so I can be stronger instead of have to be dependent. All right, Maya. Thank you, Colby. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, it's 25 years of marriage full of actual deceit. That's a different thing. If you had 25 years of deceit, you probably should have seen those red flags a little bit sooner. I bet you if you're in the next relationship, those red flags are a lot more obvious to you. That's what you had those life lessons for. Pretty man, thank you, baby. I love you. Good stuff. That's a good question. Obviously, you got me going. Neighbor calls the cops. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you've you've already gotten to the police showing up in your imagination. That's very funny. I was asking questions worse and then trying to make sure I'm not just overthinking. Um, well, it depends on the way you're asking the questions. It's because sometimes people ask questions that are leading. And when people ask leading questions or they add in stuff like, I already know you're cheating. Just show me what it is. Why don't you just reassure me? And you go, hold on. That whole first thing that you added that I already know you're cheating is incorrect. So before we go that path, can we please remove the part that I know is not true before you make it a fact? <laughs> the adding part becomes a little different. And it's one of those things that really messes up the conversation um, is when people start to add in things that aren't said because they need it to match what they've seen happen before in the past. And that gets very frustrating when you're trying to say, I have no problem giving you reassurance, but what you just said is not what I said. <laughs> and you made up a straw man argument for me that, like, it's for sure that's what you're doing. And you're like, I see you're adding in to make it your answer. But consider the truth before you make it your answer. Um, this does go for most people. There are people, like it's a very small percentage. And just for you guys, as far as it goes for like these narcissists and compulsive liars and serial cheaters, this is a small category. But if that's the category you shop in for what you're attracted to because you are in, oh boy, who gave me a cowboy hat? For if that's what you're attracted to, you're going to keep shopping in the section where those people are, and you're going to think that's just all there is. A majority of guys are good guys. A majority. But a lot of the good guys don't hang out in the narcissist gaslighting, you know, I'm still in boy mode, take, take, take. Like it's one of those things most good guys aren't in that section. But if you're waiting for that kind of a guy who's super confident and he's really great on first dates and meets all of my Prince Charming check marks, um, odds are you might find somebody who's putting on a show just so they can get away with what they want to get away with. If your criteria for what makes a good guy is in the bad guy section, you're going to keep finding the same thing over and over again. What's your recommend recommendation on how to handle a new relationship where there isn't any deceit? Um, I guess be excited because <laughs> it sounds like that's a good thing. You have pure trust right now. Don't bring stuff in that's not there and kind of be grateful for the authenticity because if you start to corrupt it with lies, you're the one who's bringing the deceit. And so don't bring that stuff back in. Don't do it. What beard wash do you use? whatever soap is in the I don't I don't have that we have that one beard wash that's in there I'll be I'm going to be very square business um I got a house full of girls and so I just grab whatever like their conditioner or whatever is and I just use their stuff um so I don't have like a I don't have a brand that I'm loyal to I mean if you guys have a brand who wants to sponsor this old psychologist well then let's do it <laughs> Thank you baby um, let's see. How do you know when it's finally over? After years, like the connection is lost. All right, so one of the things... Oh, yeah, did I just reveal what I'm doing with all the girls' shampoo? Sorry, babe. So one of the things <clears throat> that happens is... What do, I, what do I do? Let's see. Finally over years after, I feel like the connection is lost. So one of the things we do in our group is we have to take an inventory. 
and it sounds easy, but what type of inventory is it that you have to go through to make it so you can see, like, what are the things inside of you? And this gets into a little bit of, like, I took some stuff from, like, Ty Lopez on this one where you go into your health, wealth, love, happiness, but then we also get into your fear, um, your pain, your gratitude, and what you're grateful for, and you start going through what are all the things that you have inside of you. A big part of this also does get into what are your values, what are your needs, what are your boundaries, what are your non-negotiables. We start getting into all of the who are you stuff. Um, ultimately, I call it nosce te ipsum, which is Latin for know thyself. And when you get into that one, uh, that's where, baby, I'll, I'll get to it. Baby, I'll get to it. <laughs> but when it, when it gets to that point, when you start knowing yourself and knowing your values and knowing your needs and knowing what you've got, and you realize that somebody is not giving you any reciprocation for what it is that you need or what you value, it's much easier to realize that you're holding on to a dream of what a relationship was versus accepting the reality that this person isn't even trying to match your values, your needs, or what you want. And that's probably a very good place to start is really write down, is this person really matching any of my values or my needs or what I need from anybody, or am I just holding on to the dream of what I believe they could have done? So, could be that. All right, babe, you're coming in on me hot right now. What is this like? Can you answer how people stop overthinking? What does that process look like? Um, what does the process look like? Yes, right on paper, yes. What does the process look like to do training? Um, that question for me is a lot like, if I want to get stronger working out, can you explain what each rep is like? we have to do the workout. And so it's kind of like me saying like, all right, let me show you what push up number one looks like. Let me show you what push up number two looks like. Let me show you what push up number three looks like. And you're gonna be like, hey, these all look the same. I'm like, you're getting it. But the more that you do it, the more you start seeing results from push ups. And it's the same way when I start practicing and practicing and practicing. When we do awareness practicing and we start getting into, do you see it? Do you see it? Did you catch it so you can train it? Did you catch it so you can practice? Did you catch it so you can train? Do you see it? And we do a lot of do you see it training. Because people come in and they have all of that programming from when they were young. All of the this is how I was raised. All of the this is what my dad used to do. All of the my mom used to do this. All of the my ex did this to me. All of this training comes in and we have to go hold on. Do you see the belief system or do you see where the choice is or do you see that's not who you want to be and make a different decision? That's more of what it is when you have a skill like overthinking that you're trying to train is you have to keep practicing. Do you see that you can use your power in, like, in a correct way or did it overrun you and now your controllers control like your power is controlling you? It's just. Did you see it? Did you catch it? Did you catch it in time to use it correctly? You know what you're trying to do. Did you get it in time? And that's a lot like saying, here's what push-up one is. Here's what push-up two is. And it's just repetition at that point. Repetition, repetition, repetition. That's how people get better at everything in life. It doesn't matter if you're trying to throw a hook on a bowling ball or shoot a basketball. The more times you shoot it, the better you get. And it's the same thing when it comes to training anything, especially here. All right, I'm going all in. This is some love. This is a lot of stuff. Let's see. Who's got a good question here? Do you think high blood pressure needs medicine to lower? I, I don't know. As far as that, that's not really necessarily my strength. Um, I'm not really big on uh, prescribing medication for people, so that wouldn't be one of the answers that I would be qualified to give. How do I overcome my insecurities? When I bring them up, it becomes a fight, and I'm more wrong than before. Twisted Jim James, come on, boy. Um, I already told you this one already. You can't bring your insecurities up to your girl. You work that stuff out with your guys. Your girl does not want you to be weak. I know some of you ladies are going to give me some pushback. Go ahead, because odds are the guy you're with isn't weak. But if he is, which he's not, 
the guys who get really open as far as their vulnerability and their vul vulnerability isn't courageous. It's like, I don't know what to do with myself and I, I don't know, I don't have a plan with my life and I, I don't know what to do and I don't know if I can do this and, and, and I'm really insecure about this part of me and I'm really insecure about this. If you knew someone like this on a first date, you wouldn't give them a second date. And so why, when you're in the relationship, are you going to do things that would disqualify you from a second date and say, that should be good? There's a point where you have to say, these are the things that I'm working through, but you have to bring that stuff where you need that empathy or that understanding or that part where you can go like, hey, I need some backup on this. Like, this is where you go to your boys. This is why we've always had the work on the car or go shoot hoops or, you know, go for a jog with your buddy or, you know, play a sport or the bowling team or whatever. Because your boys, your boys will go, let me hear what you got. And then they, they work it through. And one thing I think I've said multiple times, you women would be surprised how much guys aren't dogging you as much as you think. Most of the conversations I've been around whenever I'm working with my men and just hanging out with my boys is always just, well, man, how do, I, how do I do it right? Like, what am I missing with her? I don't understand. Every time I'm doing this, it's like I'm just doing everything wrong. How do I do it right? What am I missing, guys? How, what's working for you? Those are the real conversations like men are having. Boys is different. Girls, different. But men and women, it's different. Guys really do want you to be happy, but just like the drink thing I just said, you don't know what drink you want, so they're just getting every drink they can think of and hoping to God you like one of them. But you're not actually ordering the drink that you want, and you think that your descriptions are helping him, but they're not. They're like, well, I want ice in it, and you're like, okay, put ice in what, milk? I don't know what to do. I'm going to go get it. Like, I said I wanted a straw. I'm like, okay, um, this isn't the glass that I like. I like tall glasses. Okay, I'll get the tall glass. Okay, I don't know. And they just keep filling it with the wrong stuff that you don't like. It's not as clear as you may think. And they're trying to also do the same thing. that they, like, They're trying to give it to you. They want to give you a drink. They want you to smile. They want you to be proud of them. They want to say, like, my man gets me the best drinks. And, like, yeah, you know, hey, fellas, you know, I got my girl the drink. We like to be the thing that's the alpha or working or makes you feel fulfilled or whatever it is. We like to be built up. We like to know we're doing well. And so with that stuff, if you're not clear of your drink, He's going to be guessing, and then you're going to tell him he's just not doing a good job, and you're going to start eyeballing other bartenders. They don't know either, but it seems like if I get a fresh start, maybe they'll get it. <sighs> That's not how it works. <laughs> if you got a guy who's willing to sacrifice for you, try and get better at ordering your drinks so he can sacrifice in a way that makes you both happy. <laughs> All right, Kimberly's got a good question, you said, babe. I see you. Oh, goodness. How do you not cry when you're mad? Men don't understand. Understand, mad equal cry. And validate equal cry. Men see weakness. I'm going to tell you something crazy here, Kim. We're not allowed to do what you're doing. We can't say mad equals cry or invalidate equals cry. We're not even allowed to do this. Ironically, you women have beaten our option to do that out of us. So we have that erased because we know that if we go, I'm mad equals cry. And I start ugly crying just because I'm mad. You go, ugh, just figure that out. You're not going to support us on that one. And if we feel invalidated and start crying, talk about man up. Stop being like this. I can't, I can't even see you sexy anymore once you do this. We're beaten out of us. So if, like, we're shown if we do this, we're weak and rejected. We're rejected for it. How is it we're supposed to show the empathy that when you're crying, we're supposed to understand? Just soak that in for a second. I know that I went pretty quick there. Thank you, Phil. It's not anything that we can do. Now, take into account also, if he's talking to you, 
and you feel like you start crying, like you feel sad or angry or whatever, and he feels like, which is not true, but he feels like he's making you cry. That makes him feel bad because he doesn't want to make you cry. When he feels bad, what is the only emotion that we've been shown we're allowed to show and not be rejected outright? Anger. So, we can't cry with you because then you get grossed out by us. We just get angry because it's the only thing that ever worked, especially when we're young. Because if I started to like, get angry at some dude and some dude saying some stupid stuff to you and I knock him out, you know, just like the movies, like beat up the bad guy, my anger in this case like, now I'm the alpha gorilla. I'm the guy who just protected you. I saved the day. That anger is rewarded. Now the girls are like, ooh, he could protect me. Ooh, I like that. I like that. As we grow into being men and adults, these situations don't come up, and we can't use that anger on you. So if you start crying, and the only thing that's validated us to make it so that we start getting attention in a positive way is being aggressive, and now we can't be aggressive, what other tools have we been allowed to open up and use? Like, for real, what else are we supposed to be doing? Because if we cry, invalidated, we're done. You're not good. If we get aggressive, not good. Because now we're being bullies or abusive or whatever. But if we're crying, we're weak and we're pussies and undesired. What's the right answer for us? When, like... We're going to say exactly the right thing, exactly the right time, and exactly the right tone with exactly the correct cadence that works exactly to calm you down. What's the right way to do that? Again, just like ordering drinks, women will tell us it's this little sliver that you want to hit with your target. Problem is, is the sliver is doing this. And it's almost surprising to us when we hit it. Like, if we're like, babe, listen, I know where you're coming from on this, and I appreciate where you're coming from. I love you for opening up. Thank you for this. I just want to be there for you, and I'm, you know, I wasn't trying to make you cry, but I definitely learned a lot about this. Let's try and do better together. And you're like, okay, thank you. That's all I needed to hear. And you're like, wait, what? Really? That, wait, that just worked? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to do that every time. But then next time, that's not what works. And we're like, oh, my God, I thought I had it. I thought I had it. I don't have it. Now what do I do? I did the thing I did last time. Why didn't it work this time? And then when we do it enough times trying to do that thing that worked the, the right time, like now it's like we're pandering. Well, now you're just trying to control me. Now you're trying to manipulate me because you know that it sometimes makes me feel better. And you're like, all I want to do is make you feel better. That's all I want to do. I just want you to feel better. Why can't I do this right? And then he starts doubting himself as a man, starts doubting himself as a, a husband, and starts making himself like, like what am I doing? I, all I want to do is be happy. And it's like every time I try to make her happy, it moves. What the heck do you do? <laughs> so understanding that when you're crying and you're able to cry and you want to feel validated and empathized and consoled, and safe and feel good we do not get any of that we as men we don't get that so how are we supposed to be so good at it makes you think for a second how is this guy supposed to be good at it when like i wouldn't give him what i'm asking for how is he supposed to do it and that's why guys are having such a hard time, because they just want you to be happy, but nobody's ordering a drink specifically. They're just saying, get me a damn drink, and it's not the one I wanted, and throwing it in their face and saying, you're a terrible bartender. This is me doing my best. I just want you to be happy. What do I do? So it's a tough thing. It's tough for guys to do this. Man, there's so many good questions. Sorry. Yeah, at first I felt bad because it's super annoying because the issue never gets addressed because I stopped talking. Yeah, Ian, is it? Oh, it's Lana Love Extensions. Uh, okay, Lana Love Extensions. Got it. Um, 
usually if there's a shutdown and and you got somebody who's stacking there's not going to be any listening it sounds just like basic not being heard you stop talking because he's getting louder he's getting louder because he doesn't feel heard and you're getting quieter because you're not being heard and so then at that point you just kind of let him rage out until he's done raging out and then nothing gets anywhere um that cycle doesn't stop until you guys make agreements a little bit of training on that one yeah exhausting the man number three you got it phil what's up buddy my dude <laughs> you're giving way too much credit most don't try that hard they need tools that's true a lot of guys do need tools but just because you don't see the results doesn't mean that they aren't trying a lot of times when i meet guys all right i'm gonna tell you guys a story okay this is a long story, but hear the story out, okay? This is a story of what it's like to be a man who's in a, in a marriage or whatever it is. I'm going to use an analogy here, so stay with me, okay? Imagine your relationship is like driving in a car. He's driving, you're shotgun, females, shotgun, male driving. Okay. You guys are going, and then you guys hear, like, a pop sound. Boom! Do, 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 do. The tire starts getting weird. The car's wobbling weird. Like, what's going on here? I don't know. I don't know. So you pull off. Just for those of you who want to jump ahead, let me save you the trouble. This is a metaphor about an argument. So, flat tire happens. Pulls over on the side of the road. Guy gets out. Never changed a tire before. I don't know how to do this right. I've heard about changing tires. I understand changing tires. Never done it before. Have no idea. I'm like, babe, you ever change a tire? She's like, I never change a tire, but we still got to be at this place on time, so hurry up. <laughs> Thanks for that. Thank you, babe. So he goes to the trunk, pops the trunk open, and gets the tools that he's been given through life. So he opens the trunk and pulls out some needle nose pliers and a hammer. He's like, this must be what I need to fix a tire. Let's go for it. So he gets out there and he starts chipping away with his pliers and the pliers are very quickly not doing very much at all he's grabbing stuff but nothing's moving he's like all right these are clearing not the way to do it so it's got to be the hammer it's the only way to do it so he starts strategically tapping the thing with the hammer to try and get it right that's really funny he starts like just tapping the tire to try and get it right i gotta get this tire off so he's strategic She's like, hurry up already. Like, okay, thanks. You want to do this, babe? I don't know what I'm doing. This is man stuff. Hurry up. Got it. Whatever. I'm in. So I'm going to start tapping the tire, but nothing is happening. While he's hitting the tire, he can see out of the corner of his eye, another car across the street starts coming over, and that car ends up, like, right across the street. Flat tire also. You see the two people in the front going back and forth, going back and forth. The guy gets out of the car and the other car... He's standing outside and just does one of those, like, <sighs> he looks over at the guy, like you, he goes, women, flat tire, right, and you both kind of do one of those, like, mm-hmm things, which is just whatever camaraderie we have, and then you hear, hear, hear your wife go out, like, what kind of car are they driving, and I don't, look at her outfit, and you're like, babe, not really helping right now. Like, let me get on this tire. And you look at this guy, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna, I am gonna. I know I can fix this tire faster than he can. So you start bashing your, you just start using your hammer, and you're bashing. And he's pulling out tools that you don't have. He's got this weird contraption and some X thing, and you're like, he's never going to get it off. He doesn't even have a hammer. So he starts hammering, you start hammering the heck out of it, and he's doing weird stuff, and you're looking at him and going at it. And at this point, you're just decimating your tire. You're banging it all in and denting it all to pieces. And the lug nuts are chipping away. And your arm is getting tired. And you're hitting this thing. And you look over. And he's finishing up his tire and putting the spare on. And you're like, I don't even know where he got a spare from. But okay. And so then he ends up putting his stuff away. And he's across the road. And he goes, hey, man. You're like, yeah, what? And you're sweating. And the tire's like... I know it's not any of my business, but do you want any help? And of course, guys, what do we say? No, I got this, man. I, it takes a lot, but I got it. I got it. No problem. I got this. Like, you sure? I mean, I'm not trying to intrude, but I mean, I can help. I just did mine, so I, I can help. Like, no, no, no. Thanks, man. I got this. And so that guy's like, all right. He gets in the car, and now he just finished his tire. In less time than you did, and you started before him, 
What do you think comes out of the wife next? Uh, what's the holdup? They just did theirs. What's wrong with you? Why didn't you get the tire fixed already? And you're like, you want to fix the tire? Like, I don't know how to fix the tire, but clearly neither do you because that guy did it twice as fast as you. And now you're in more of an argument. And so you're like, screw this. And you're crashing this thing. Everything you got is going in. At this point, the rim's all bent to hell. Everything's destroyed. Your tire's mangled. And you're tired. You're, you're just smoked now. Your arm is just throbbing and just blown out. You can't, you can barely lift the hammer. Pouring sweat, shirt soaked, uncomfortable. And she's Googling it for you. Like, you're supposed to take off the lug nuts. And you're like, what, what do you think I've been trying to do here? What do you think I'm trying to do? Um, I'm telling you, I know what to do. Just take off the lug nuts. Like, I, I got a hammer here. I I'm do I'm did my best here. Why isn't this working? Like, I don't know, but you got to do this. Let me just call some people. And now she's starting to text back and forth with tire changing guys. She's making phone calls with guys who change tires all the time and own tire places and are doing better than you. And just now they're talking more and more. And she's like, I'm going to go with this guy and get some help so we can get the tire changed. You're like, what? You're just going to leave me here? You're like, you, listen, you got your hands full. You figure it out. And then it starts getting even more time away where she's hanging out with other tire guys and doing all these other things. And you're wondering, why am I not doing so well on this tire? The point of the story is most guys aren't given the tools or the training for all of the arguments or the things that you run into. They don't know. Now, if you look at the tire in the story, He's beating the crap out of the tire to try to make it so you guys can get back on the road again. But he was only given a hammer and some pliers from his parents' training. So he's doing all the stuff that he saw growing up. He's doing all of the things that he ever was shown what to do, but it would never prepared him for this situation. You know, if there was something where like, hey, I need to put a nail on a piece of wood, he'd be like, bam! Problem solved. You see me. I got this. But he didn't have a tire iron, and he didn't have a jack, and he didn't have a spare tire. So all he had was a hammer, and he starts going to work as hard as he can to get you back on the road, to get where you want to go, and he doesn't know what's wrong. I'm giving everything I've got to try to make you better, make you happy, make it so we can get on the road, make it so we're safe, and I don't know why it's not working and I'm exhausted and I'm tired and I don't have anything left and I'm crying now and you're looking at me like oh my god it's a tire get over it and I'm like it's more than a tire I'm failing you I'm failing us I'm not doing a good job I'm not the guy I thought I was I'm starting to second guess who I am that's what he's working with that's that's what these guys are doing but it's not for lack of effort. It's not that he doesn't love you. It's not that he won't try. It's that he doesn't know what he doesn't know. So how is he supposed to be good at something he doesn't know about yet? And that's where these guys end up being stuck. They don't know. I don't know yet. But if they knew, they would do it. I'm telling you, almost every guy, when I go, yeah, you just didn't have this thing. Here, use this. It's no different than trying to get like a screw out of the side of a desk. You know, they just, they just hammer the desk and keep breaking desks. And you're like, well, we don't have any desks left. And he's like, here's your screw. <sighs> I had to smash it out of this thing. You're like, it's all bent out. But if you had a screwdriver, he'd be like, there you go. Just wrong tools. And so you don't know what you don't know. So that's it's a tough thing for that. That's an analogy and a story to kind of give you an idea of when you're saying, why aren't you doing a good job? Why aren't you trying? Why aren't you even trying to get, like, do anything? Why do you seem like you're so useless? Why are you not being this guy? Why are you not being that guy? It's not that he doesn't want to be great or do good things or help or, or make you happy. He's just missing those tools. That's it. That's it. He would do it. If he had the screwdriver, he would take it out. Happy to do so. But he's just trying to do it with a hammer. And that's where I have a lot of guys who I'm like, 
I'm like, what's going on? He's like, my daughter's trying to wear an outfit I don't like. So I said, you look like a hoe and I'm going to kick you out of the house. And I'm like, maybe not the best way to teach values. <laughs> maybe if you're going to teach to value and respect yourself, you should have a value and respect conversation and not threaten to kick you out of the house and then hit her with judgments. Let's change the approach a little bit. <laughs> so it's just I don't know those tools because my dad used to say it. So that's what I'm going to say. And it's one of those things where it gets a little tough for guys to be the guy that, that you may need because they've never had a role model that emulates what they need. Let's see. Why are you depicting women as nags, though? Um, not all women are nags, but I would say a majority of where society has gone is women turn far quicker to complaining than they do encouraging. Now, I, I should probably caveat that a little bit. Y girls and women with low awareness, far more naggy, far more. There are good women. There's good women who are highly encouraging, high awareness, high education, and support their guys 100%. I would say that if you're one of those women, you're in the minority in society today. There's a lot more complaining than there is encouraging. And so if you're one of those women who are like, I'm one of the ones who supports my guy, ride or die. If you're one of those, you're in the dying breed because <laughs> you are in the minority. So that makes you the rare one. Uh, I would say if you start looking at just how people really treat each other these days, the golden rule has gone out the window. And it's a lot more child mentality of take, take, take. What can I get? What can I get? Versus how can I serve? What can I do to, to grow together? How can I be the best for you? Like, there's a lot less of that. So, there's that. You said women don't need men. What? Are you see? I don't even know what that means. I don't know what you're trying to get at with that one. All right. Let's see if I'm placing the bet. Let's see what we got here. Mind blown, the man. The man. Let's see. I want my guy, my favorite person, to talk to you. But I asked him to, I've already asked him to do so many things. Ray of Sunshine 213. Uh, what guys really quickly realize is I'm guy's guy. We have no blame, no shame, no judgments. And so that's why when I see any shame or judgments on this, it's kind of just you see it bounce off. It's not helpful when you add judgments or shames or add things to conversations. And when guys talk to me, they very quickly realize that's not the way the conversation goes. And then once they see the dynamic that I bring with them, um, they tell me their life story. So a lot of times people would associate this as some sort of like cry for help or a sign of weakness or you have to go to therapy. Uh, that's not the case on this one. When it comes down to being able to help out like a guy understand what's the tools he's missing or what's going on with his life or where did it go off track, um, it ends up becoming a pretty cool conversation so just have the guy book a call we have great talks it's I, I can't really think of any time that a guy got on and it wasn't just a good conversation so um you know if we're not really working together i guarantee he gets something to help him and uh that just makes it so he has at least a couple more tools so you guys can be better as a team so book the call let's do it oh man stuff is blowing up i was looking at that one thing jeez let's see because when we get help, same response, we cry and break down. I don't know what you mean. I love and support my man. Why when I kindness and loyalty and thoughtfulness is in a relationship? Renata, I don't know what that means. I love supporting my man. Why when I kindness and loyalty and thoughtfulness is in a relationship? Let's see. Oh, I, there's more to it. Okay. I think that's what the problem is in a relationship. We need each other and support each other. Yeah, it seems like you, you have a good grasp of being able to support and encourage each other through it. Says what he wants. Says he wants attention. Love your lectures here. Thanks, Isaiah. I meant to say I wouldn't support my man it's all part of a good relationship. Why wouldn't I? Re okay, I'm, I'm, my arm is getting in the way of the words, and I'm missing them. Okay, so 
Why, why wouldn't I support my man? Absolutely. It's a good question. Like I said, dying breed, ladies. Like, it's, you're the example. It's hard to accept this when some of us deal with very manipulative men. Uh, listen. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in a little bit, Lana. You're not going to like it. Or maybe you will like it. I don't know. Ladies, if I was going to ever do a, a woman's class, especially for single women, my entire class would be, let me teach you how to do an interview. Let me teach you to be able to look for the things that you need and value in a man versus the stuff society is saying a guy has to be. I feel like a lot of girls are doing this thing. They're going, all right, he's 6'3", love that because he must be able to protect me. Uh, he looks like he's got money, so that's pretty good. Um, let me see what his resume here says. Wants to sleep with all my friends. Uh, actually lives with his parents. Won't ever show me where he really lives, though. Um, doesn't have an actual job. Okay. He does stuff on the side. That's a side hustle. No red flags here. No reliable transportation. And, um, yeah, again, still wants to sleep with all my friends. When can you start? Uh, I'm ready to invest, invest my life into you. Let's do it. He's like, yeah, cool. You know, you can't come over to my place, though, and uh, I'm only giving you this one phone number, not my other phone. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. We're all, we're all adults, right? Your, <laughs> your interviews are so crazy that there's no concept of what a good dude is. And then there's all of these things where you have to go through the Prince Charming thing. All right. Ladies, you want me to hit you with it? Let's go. Fellas, fellas get ready to LOL because that's what this is. I'm going to go over. Here's what women are going in with. Like, here's what I'm looking for. If I can create my guy, this is what my guy is going to be. <clears throat> These are the traits that I need for me to be validated as a woman. I need him to be a protector, a provider. I need him to be patient, calm, sensitive, but badass, though. So I want him strong and confident. But I also need my man to be handy because I want him to fix stuff around the house, and I like that. But on top of that, I need him to be a good listener and just really listen to me and validate my feelings. But I need him to be smart, so he has to have a certain level of education, so at least a college degree at this level. Um, but I also want him to be loving and so sensitive and caring. But I like a guy with a good sense of humor, so I need him also to be really, really funny. Um, but, oh, he's got to be a family man because I also need him to love kids because someday I want to be a mom and I want him to love kids or I already have kids. And I need him to give unconditional love to my kids, which are not his kids, but he should never look at it that way. Um, I need him to be loyal because I need that's a very important trait to me. You have to be loyal, but also generous. I want to have a guy who just gives to everybody and just is just so big on his heart and will just keep giving and giving and giving. Um, but he's ambitious and he's got big dreams and he's always on his purpose and always going on a mission and I love being there for them. But I also want to make sure that finances, I want him to be health, like, like very wealthy and like, like minimum like 100, 200K and I want him to be very happy to pay for my kids and all the stuff that I want, even if I'm not really appreciative of it. He should just know, and we're good. Um, has to have a college degree. Oh, I like a guy with status. I want him to be like, I don't know, maybe like a business owner or like a CEO or maybe on the radio or famous or something. He's got to have some sort of like clout to him. That way I feel like, you know, I got me a king. It's going to be good. Um He's crazy sexy. I want him to, like I want a six pack and I want him to look really good, but be like super humble about it. Like like no no no. I don't want everybody to know. Please don't look. I don't want. I want to be really modest. Like I want to be like like David Beckham, but like don't talk to me, please. Like I'm already good. That's what I want him to do. Um, let's see. Pays for everything. Even if I make more money, I want him to pay because that's just chivalrous, and I love chivalry too. Um, let's see. He loves all of my feelings and loves all of my interests and accepts me for me. Um, he speaks well. I just like when they're articulate and I want them to speak really well. Oh, but I also want him to have just killer style. I want him to be like, woo, woo, looking good. And so I, want, I don't want him to be like a scrub. I want him to look good. So he likes that. But I also want him to be like always expanding his mind. So I, I want him to be like 
a reader. I want them to just have interesting topics and good readers. And so I'm always looking for a guy who can just keep me stimulated in conversation. So I want him to be good at that. Oh, he also can never get angry. He's just always stoic, always calm. He just he never freaks out over anything. It's almost like nothing ever shakes him. And I really like that about him. Um, he has perfect teeth and smiles all the time. He's just such a loving guy. Um, also, you know what? I want him to like all the same like songs and same movies that I like. I like I like us to have a lot in common, and so I like him to watch like rom coms and my shows, and we can like have a lot of quality time together watching those. Um, whenever there's heavy lifting to do, I want him to do them. I I want him to actually to be happy to do the heavy lifting because I don't want to do it. So I I want him to do all of that and be like thankful to do it. I like that. Oh, he has to like all my friends. If he doesn't like my friends, see ya. I don't care if he has all of those. You got to like my friends. And yeah, sometimes they're bitches and I don't like them, but he has to look past that. I don't want him to even get into that at all. Never leaves the toilet seat up. Always respectful. Never leaves the toilet seat up. Big one for me. Um, will drop everything for me. He makes me a priority. That's what I want him to do. So I want him to make it so like anything that comes up, I'm number one. Um, I want him to be a good cook. I like to eat. I want delicious food. I want him to do all the cooking and not just cook, be like good at cooking. So that would be really nice. Oh, but he also, he doesn't really need the praise and recognition. He doesn't really need that stuff. I, I, I just want him to like do amazing things, but not really require me to kind of like blow up his balloon. He's just already good all the time. He doesn't really need that. Um, oh, you know what I think is sexy is like when he's a good dancer. I want a guy who dances real good. So I want that. I want that guy to be also a good dancer. Um, you know, are you guys kind of getting the idea here? When they did like a study like this for women, when they did the study, it was like this. It was insane. Like there was a woman who did the study going like, what are women asking? They want their guys to be like, oh yeah, don't forget he washes the dishes, of course. What do they want their men to be like? And there was women who were crushing, like, like knocking guys off because his shoes and belt didn't match. Like that was it. Ladies, they did this study with hundreds of people. There was three things that came to with guys when it came down to what are they looking for in a woman on a date to make it so it could be compatible. The three things guys said is they said, I want a woman who's like at least kind of attractive. She doesn't have to be like a 10, but give me like maybe like a six or even like if she's wearing a makeup, it's a seven. Like she can take care of herself, but I don't need her to be like the hottest chick in the world. Just somebody who's attractive. Like I just want somebody who like I can be attracted to. It doesn't have to, you don't have to be like a model, just be somebody who like you take care of yourself and beautiful. I, I'm okay with that. That's good. I like that. Um, I also, I just, can we curb the crazy? Can we curb the crazy? I just don't want a lot of crazy and drama in my life. So just, just lower on the crazy scale. That would be nice. And then somebody I can grow with. That's what I want. So at least kind of attractive. Doesn't have to be crazy, but just attractive. Don't be crazy. And someone I can grow with. That's what guys came to when they did the exact same survey with men and women. That's great. That's, that's what it came to. And this, this was a woman who did the study on this one. This wasn't even me. <laughs> like this was, this, was, uh, this was the way that that study went where women had, it was like 150 things that were on their list of things. And then for men, like it was narrowed down to be like, can I just, can I get someone who will grow with me and doesn't give me drama and like at least is attractive and like pretty attractive at least, or at least have some traits that I find attractive. Like I'd be good with that. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's pretty funny and humbling when you really look at it. Now, mind you guys, I didn't look at very much of this. I saw some people cracking up. Phil, I saw you cracking up. Um, let me, babe, where are we at here? Girl, I hear the conversation. I don't believe this. This is real. Yeah, that's funny. What is this? Wendy, what are you doing with this grinder thing? You're killing me. Yeah, women stuck in fantasy. Um, these expectations. Society still makes us out to be imbeciles and knuckle-dragging morons. Tattooed or that's, that's. I mean, it's rough, but maybe some truth to it. Oh, uh, yeah, Dominic. 
is all <laughs> Dominic is all this and a bag of chips. What are you talking about? You got a good one. Dom's good. He's a good dude. He <laughs> likes your friends right in the bed. Yep. Some of them are. That's that's where you get into the guys who are not good dudes. So, anyways, yeah. When it really comes down to um, what's happening these days is this crazy notion of like Prince Charming. It's backfiring, but you got to take a little bit of, of account. Where is this stuff coming from? And and babe, you remember when I went in on the Disney stuff? You guys remember, like. When we went in on like the Disney part of what's going on with our girls, why are they having all these expectations? <laughs> Tattooed a door. I didn't read it right. <laughs> Tattooed and crude. Okay, my bad, my bad. <laughs> um, let's take into account a couple things here. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some some stuff out there that's just kind of like, oh shit, I didn't see that before. Let me think about it. Um, how about this? How about how many of you women have seen Twilight? for example, or um, Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, Beauty and the Beasts, uh, Sleeping Beauty, <laughs> um, Cinderella. Uh, you start going through a lot of these movies that you start seeing, and, you're, and you watch, like, if you're watching Twilight, you got the girl Bella Swan. This, this whole thing is about vampires and werewolves and stuff. And they did a study that I'm going to go back to this Disney stuff. When you do a, st they did a study to see what are women looking up for their fantasies. And so when they did the study, this was Google did the study, with um, guys, it was like a five minute study because it was just porn and it was just, it was just titties and butts or whatever, whatever the thing was. So they did that study, they're like, all right, guys are just looking up dirty stuff. That's what, that's what boys are going to do. Got it. Women, what are women looking up for their stuff? And women got more into the, like the, the, the fantasy aspect of it. There was more to it than just the porn stuff. There was more to it to make it so that they were looking up this different fantasies. You want to know what the top five most searched fantasies for women were? It was vampires, werewolves, pirates, surgeons, and billionaires. Those were the top five like fantasy story things that were built in for women, what they found attractive. So now go back to the stories for like Twilight, for example. Now you got a girl who's got to choose between this vampire and this werewolf. Ooh, so sexy, right? These are powerful alpha monsters. These are, these are you know, the, the apex predators. And now you got this girl who has to choose between them because they're infatuated with her. They just can't get over how great she is question what did she do in the movie that was so great when i was watching it i'm like she's the most boring character out of all of the characters on this show like literally she actually didn't do anything in fact her ultra power was she just nullifies everything from being cool she overreacts. That's what she. That's her power. Like all these apex alpha predators were all like really into this girl who really didn't do anything special. Okay, let's keep going. Fifty Shades of Grey. You got a billionaire who wants to do some freaky stuff. Freaky stuff is not that great without billionaire. What did this girl do that was so amazing? that the billionaire chose her. I don't I, I, She seemed like the most boring person on the show <laughs> again. It, she's just like, I don't know, I just, I, I do some writing, I'm new to town, I don't know. Like, oh, he, that's why the billionaire chose you. You didn't, you, you were pretty and new in town. Got you. Sleeping Beauty? She looks hot sleeping. So she gets a prince who will go and fight M Maleficent, who turns into a dragon with a barbed wire fences everywhere. Like, this guy, while she's asleep, goes and fights one of the most powerful fairies ever. She literally turns into a dragon, and he fights her as a dragon. Why? Because she was hot sleeping? And then he starts making out with her when she's sleeping? This is... 
they teach this in school. You don't give tea to sleeping people. But for some reason, if you're hot sleeping, you get a prince. She didn't do anything. You know, I mean, get into Cinderella. She, I mean, she's like, she, she'll clean the house, I guess. And then she looks good when she's in blue. And then she's not good with shoes. But otherwise, he just saw her looking good in blue. She actually didn't do anything that was, like, pretty cool. <laughs> she didn't, didn't really do anything that was like, hey, you get a prince for that. Like, you're at that level. And that one was kind of like, okay, well, yeah, they didn't really talk about much. They didn't really get into what's in common or, hey, let's do something great. She just looked real hot that night. Okay. All right. Then, then what are we teaching our girls here? What are we teaching our girls? Like, you don't have to bring anything to the table to be chosen by these, like, alpha, apex, whatevers. Like, you don't have to do anything. It's kind of a little weird that that's going that way, which is why I'm pretty happy that, like, yeah, and the princes don't get any credit. <laughs> Tattoos, you're funny. But that's why I, I like a little more when it starts going into Shrek, for example. Shrek I kind of liked. Why? Because the dude was an ogre. He wasn't pretending to not be an ogre. I'm an ogre. That's what he is. He's a big, green, hairy ogre. That's what his thing is. But that ogre would fight a dragon. That ogre will protect his people. That ogre ends up being a great friend. That ogre makes mistakes, but then owns his mistakes. That ogre doesn't feel like he fits in, so he isolates himself away so he doesn't have to feel worse about being the ogre that he is. And then you've got Princess Fiona. Now, Princess Fiona is a badass on her own right. She kungs fu stuff, and she's fun to do things, and she's interesting, and she, um, she brings stuff to the table that he doesn't do and is, can teach him stuff, and they got a good back and forth. But also... Fiona's also an ogre, too, at night. So she may be lady in the streets, but a freak in the sheets. She turns into an ogre, too. She doesn't reject him for being an ogre. She accepts him because she's part ogre also. And I kind of like that. We're like, listen, it's not about you're a princess and he's got to be a prince and amazing and all this stuff. I like watching now that women are realizing if I want a good man, I also have to be a good woman. And I like that a lot more. If you want to have a strong relationship, it can't be that he's got the Prince Charming laundry list and you're just the chick from Twilight. You don't get to be like Belle and Beauty and the Beast where, what, Stockholm Syndrome? What are we doing here? Like, what is the thing? Like, you're a prisoner and because it's just me and you, like, she ends up falling in love with the guy she's imprisoned with? What are these? <laughs> What's happening here? What's happening? But he's strong and dangerous, and he's unpredictable. And there's something about having, like, the ultra-apex sought-after predator choose you, and then for some reason, you're the one woman who can calm him down. You're the one woman who can tame the beast. You're the one woman that the ultra alpha chooses. And you're the one that can be like, babe, calm it down. And he does. I don't know what it is with that, but it was in almost all of the fantasies that women were looking up. It was always some sort of tame the apex predator fantasy. That was the most common thing that Google found. That's what they, when they looked it up, that was the most common thing looked up. And uh, I think it's kind of weird when you start looking at these Twilight things doing so well when you have a teenage girl choosing between a 110 year old dead guy and a guy who turns into a dog on which one she's going to be with. Necrophilia or bestiality is a weird choice for, for girls to be looking up, but for whatever reason, super common. Look at this Vampire Diaries or whatever. Don't get me started. I don't know. Gets weird. <laughs> you guys get it. It gets weird. I don't know what's happening here. We weren't taught that we need to bring 50% to the relationship. Heather, you are correct. 
just like we weren't taught that we need to keep getting better to make it so our relationship stays healthy, we're taught we're supposed to give you everything instead of also be able to keep improving ourselves so our relationship stays strong, growing together. We, none of us are really taught right. We're taught, like you said, like women are taught, you just have to have the burden of beauty. You be beautiful, and then he has the burden of performance. He's got to be the quarterback or the producer or the, the, the guy who you know brings something to the table that's got like potential or whatever it's going to be. He's got to perform, whether it's be in good shape or be strong or be uh, a musician or you know uh, own a business. There's the burden of performance, and then women have the burden of beauty. The hard thing is with the burden of beauty is that it's a temporary commodity. It is a depreciating asset. Over time, that goes away. And that's why a lot of times you'll see young girls, or when you're younger, anywhere from like your late teens to like up to 30-ish, some, that's where it starts to start changing is after 30. Not saying everybody looks bad, not everybody likes that, but it starts to depreciate. We can all agree that getting older is not the same as looking younger. It's not the same. And so when your most valuable asset that you were taught is that you have to be beautiful to be chosen, not bring 50%, not, you know, be an equal party, not team up, not have value that you bring to make it so the team is stronger. You just have to be beautiful to be chosen. Well, that asset goes away. And so if like a weird statistic that just came out is that right now is the first time in human history that we've had more women over 30 without kids than not. Never happened before ever in history. Nature just generally likes young moms. That's in all animals, all nature. Nature likes young moms. It's the highest probability of success. And it's for the first time ever that women are working on their careers and working on their goals and working on their dreams, which I got no problems with. Absolutely go for it. But they're not learning the skills that it takes to like have a successful relationship. And so you're watching um, TED Talks with a lady who's got a PhD and can't find a man. She's like, I did all the PhD stuff, but now I don't know how to talk to guys. And my main asset, now that I'm 36 years old for being attractive, is less than what it used to be. So now my PhD, which guys don't qualify you based on what you provide because we are taught to have burden of performance. If you bring burden of performance to the table, it, it's more like competition than a team. If you feel like I'm higher level than you, it makes it so it's weird. You're like, why aren't you doing better? We don't want to go to work because men are built to compete all day, all night. We compete, compete, compete. And then we come home and got to compete. We're like, please, seriously, can we just snuggle and like, let me shut this off for a little bit. That's all I want to do. Well, no, I think that I'm better than you and this and this. And so why aren't you doing this? And you're like, oh my gosh, please stop. Come on. I don't want to compete. <laughs> I don't want to compete with you right now. I just want to be able to be cool. Well, I want to win, and I'm going to do it right now. You're like, fine, you win. See, you're a pussy. I win again. You suck. You're like, what? Are you serious right now? <laughs> we aren't attracted to that. We don't want to compete when we get home, too. And girls, no different than you don't want a guy who lets himself go and isn't trying to get better. We all have a role to play. And ironically, it's so funny. Think of the things that you liked about each other when you first started dating. What was the thing that made you choose each other? And then what was the thing that made you both stop doing it? <laughs> what happened that you stopped doing the thing that made you both choose each other. That's where it gets crazy. That's where you start going like, how come our relationship is on the rocks? And why are things going crazy? And why are we not communicating very well? Well, remember when you started dating, you used to think everything he said was funny and you used to listen to him. But now you're telling him what to do and you have a bunch of judgments about him. 
and he gave up on all of his stuff so he could be okay. Remember, you told him, stop hanging out with your friends because we got life to do. Remember, you said you can't go fishing so much because we've got kids. Remember, you said, I don't want you doing the motorcycle anymore. I'm done. Remember, he gave up all the things that made you choose him. Don't you remember? He did it for you. And you're like, yeah, well, I mean, he had a choice. I mean, I told him, like, he could or couldn't, but, you know, it was implied. And you're like, oh, my gosh. What happened? Or guys, when guys get comfortable. Guys get in the dynamic, and they're like, I got her. I got her. We're done. I got her. I'm good. And then they stop doing the things they used to do, like working out or eating right. Or they stop trying to pursue a goal, and they just take care of responsibilities and just do the bills. And they just, they stop working on themselves. They don't read books. They're not trying to grow in any capacity. They just watch the football game or just watch other people get successes. And then it just starts going a direction where it's like no effort anymore, like when you guys were dating. And so guys start to like just kind of, it seems like they give up, like the competition is over. Let me just tell you guys straight up. Let me just tell you guys. The way hypergamy works is inside of a woman, there's that piece that says, I don't feel like I should be settling. And so it makes them feel the best when they wake up in the morning and go, I know that this is the best man I can get and I feel damn good about it. And if they start waking up and they think that you aren't in hunt mode anymore and you think there are no other hunters because you guys got married, you are wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. They're all in the woods with their bow and arrow like, go ahead and fall asleep, Mr. Lion. Go ahead and fall asleep. I'm going to get her. You also have to keep doing the things that made you attracted to each other. If she loved that you took care of your body and you, you were building your mind and you had a dream and you were ambitious and you had these things and then you stopped working on your body and you stopped working on your mind and then you stopped working on your goals and ambitions and you just stopped doing that stuff. And now your name is mow the lawn guy and take out the garbage, go to work and that's it. You think the other hunters stopped hunting? If you got a high value girl and you're not being a high value guy, eventually, just like the tire story, the tire repair guy starts to become a little more interesting than he should. Guys, we have to work on us too. We gotta work on us too. That's it. We gotta work on us. Yes, they're gonna make a lot of requests. If you understand your boundaries and your values, you can go, babe, I understand that you want that. I don't believe that's right for where we're at at the moment because I know that we have to stay on track for this, but eventually we'll get to it. <laughs> like, but if you stopped working on like the things that makes you both grow, it's going to get very, 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 very appealing to start letting dudes that would never slide in the DMs get a little bit of extra, you know, I'm going to reply, but it doesn't mean anything. I'll leave the door open, but I'm not looking but I'll leave the door open, you know, start doing like surveys, DM me. Hey, what do you think about this picture? Feeling cute, but might take it down later. Like, it's just, they fish in a different way. They just put lures in the water and go like, it's not like I'm like trying to catch anything. Just say, I'm not trying to catch anything, but I mean, if something bites, you know, I'll take a look, but I'm just saying, I'm not, you don't see me touching the fishing poles that I put in the ground and, I, and the lures are in the water. Just because I'm not touching them, I'm not trying to fish. They just fish differently. And so they're going to look at the different, they're going to look at the options. They'll look at the options. And then most of the times, if they look at the options and they go, I know I got a better one. I know I got a good guy. That stuff doesn't, it doesn't affect them. They'll, they'll shut these dudes down quick. Shutting guys down is not one of the problems. But if you're not doing anything to improve you, and you stopped being the best man you can be, these dudes who never would have had a chance start to have a chance. And you think it's because she's not loyal, but you were both breaking vows. You both stopped doing stuff to make it so you were doing the things you promised you would do for each other. I'll always be my best me for you. I promise to love you no matter what. I promise to be the, like, to always 
you know, uh, uh, love you only, be loyal, sickness and health, all these things. And then it just got comfortable and stopped trying. We have to do our part, both sides. And women, if you want to be treated as a valued equal part, bring stuff to the table more than just you look good today. You should also have skills. We got teenage girls. I tell you, if you're going to compete with these boys, you better have skills because you can't go in and just be like, I'm cute. I should be the leader. No, the leader who has leadership skills should be the leader. <laughs> and so we got to teach that if you want to be a valued part of the relationship, you have to bring value. And if you want to be able to keep all of the other hunters at bay, keep being the strongest lion on the hill and keep being the best you every day. Does this mean you got to be like the toughest workout guy? No, but keep building this, build your spirituality, build your mentality and read books all the time. Keep growing as a human being. But you know what? Take 10 or 15 and put it into your body and try not to eat garbage because eating garbage isn't good for anyone. I'd probably take, take pop out of your equation if you're a soda drinker. My health recommendation, don't drink soda. It's poison. That's just me putting out my, my judgment in two cents. Uh, how can you do all that at the same time and still show up, show, show you are willing to walk away? I mean, all right. Walter, let me understand if I'm reading this right. How can you do all that and at the end at the same time show you are willing to walk away. I don't know if I understand the question correctly. I'm trying to see another thing that you said, Walter. I feel like what you're trying to say is like, I, I, how do I do all of these things, but then still like have like a boundary to show like, like if not reciprocated, I'm willing to walk away. I feel like that's what you're maybe asking. And and maybe let me know if that's what it is. Is that where we're at where you're like, let's see, how can you invoice, enforce boundaries if I can't leave? Uh, Snorlax, like, I think we got an, an appointment together. So I, I got to hear your story because there, there's got to be more to it than that. All right, Walter. So you're saying like, all right, so how do I keep healthy boundaries and how do I keep doing all of my things? I think one of the things I wish that I was taught sooner in a relationship is I wanted to be able... Are you watching it, Josh? What's up, kid? Are you trying to get in this? I'm coming in. Oh, here we go. We got a nephew coming in. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Tune into the live. Come on. <laughs> Boy's preaching. Come on now. Thank, thank you, Joshua. Yep. I'm here for moral support. I appreciate Keep all preaching. the moral support. Keep giving it to him. <laughs> thank you, Joshua. <laughs> All right, so how do we create healthy boundaries in the relationship? Here's the thing I wish that I would have known before. Your relationship is a series of agreements. Now, this is where you see, obviously, people start pulling in stuff from other stuff. They start pulling in things like making demands and not making requests. How do you know the difference between a demand and a request? I'll tell you. If you make a request for somebody and you think it's a request, the way you can tell is the way the person reacts when it doesn't go the way that they want. So let's say, for example, like, hey, babe, could you get me a glass of water? And if she's like, no, no, I'm in the middle of this thing. I'm, I'm not able to get that glass of water for you. You're like, what the hell? I do this all day long. I do this for you. I do this for you. I ask you for one glass of water and you won't get it for me. Did I make a request? Or was I really making a demand, and if you didn't do what I wanted, I had an angry reaction? In that case, I was making a demand. I was demanding a glass of water because when you couldn't do it, I got pissed off. Now, if I made a request, like, hey, babe, can you grab me a glass of water? And she's like, no, no, I'm right in the middle of this thing. I can't. I'll get it in a little bit, but I can't do it right now. Then I'm like, oh, no worries. I can get it. I got it. Thanks, though. It's no, I mean, no problem. I was just requesting. If you can do it, great. If you can't, great. I just, I'll figure it out. That's a request. I didn't have to get pissed off. I wasn't demanding her because she couldn't do it. And so a lot of times people in relationships will start making judgmental demands. And they'll even do it in this passive aggressive way. Like, why don't you ever do this around the place? I mean, we didn't talk about that. We don't have an agreement that I would do that thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
We didn't. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I want the dishes done a certain way, and you have never done the dishes. You're like, yeah, I've never done the dishes. We actually, we really didn't have a conversation about this. But I can see you've been thinking about this a lot, and you may have had 140 conversations about the dishes in your head, but I wasn't actually there for those. So what are we talking about? <laughs> what is the thing? Yeah, <laughs> tattooed crude objection, leading. <laughs> exactly. This is where people start making demands of each other. The idea behind this comes from Marshall Rosenberg. He was a psychologist that created a, a style called NVC, nonviolent communication. And one of the tools that he put together for being able to understand each other was observations, feelings, needs, and requests. And requests and demands was the last piece to make it so you guys could actually hear each other and not be angry at each other. And so observation is, I can see that you're upset about the dishes thing. She's like, yeah, I'm upset. Like, okay, observation confirmed. What are you feeling right now about this? Well, I feel like you should be doing the dishes. I'd be like, well, that's not actually a feeling. That's still what you want done. What feelings? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling angry? Do you feel, you know, um, unvalidated? Do you feel ignored? Like, what are you feeling right now? And then you figure out what are you feeling right now? And then you're like, what do you need? And this gets into the unmet needs. And this is, like I said, the, the drink thing. If you don't know what you need, how do they understand how to help? If you can't say, I need to be supported here, or I need to be heard here, or I need to know that I've got a teammate here, we go, okay, I hear what your needs are now. What is the request that we can agree upon that we can both do that? How do we do that? What do, what do you need that I can go, I agree, I can do that for you? And if you don't have an agreement, people start making demands. Do the damn dishes. Stop making our life horrible. Why don't you do anything around the house? These are just going all over the place for judgments and shaming. And it's no agreements. But if you go like, how about this? Every other day, I'll do the dishes, then you do the dishes. Just back and, like, we'll switch back and forth. Like, okay, that seems pretty fair. Okay, I can do that. Like, you do the dishes Tuesday, I do them Wednesday, you do them Thursdays, I do them Fridays. Okay. How about we just take Sunday? Sunday's off. You're like, let them stack. And we team up on Monday. Okay, cool, because they're going to be stacked up. Now we got an agreement. We're doing better. We don't have to argue anymore who's right and wrong about dishes. I didn't know what you were talking about in the first place, so now I at least have a chance. That's a, that's a pretty easy way to be able to make it so like now we can establish some sort of communication boundaries. Now, for, now comes the part, now that you have agreements, how do you hold your agreements for your boundaries? Caveat stuff. This is where you guys both agree. If you start to skip the dishes, you know, I don't know, you got to pay on Friday night or whatever it is. Like you start creating something that you guys can both agree. Like we both know this is best for the relationship, but if one of us is slacking, what do we do? <laughs> like what do we do if like, hey, inevitably we're going to miss? Is it one of those things like, hey, if you miss it, since you didn't use your hands to do the dishes and I got to do the dishes on a Wednesday, you got to use your hands to rub my back for like 15 minutes because that's how long the dishes would be. And you're like, okay, fair. And you got to be like, what kind of back rub? It can't be that like burp, 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 bullshit back rub. I need that like, give me that deep tissue, but get the lotion out and stuff. I need the real thing. And you're like, okay, okay. And then you make up, okay, if you don't do the dishes and I got to hit those dishes, well then you got to help me organize something in the garage for 15 minutes. You're going to be like, oh boy. And it's like, and I don't mean to just go there and be like, that's dirty. I need you to pick up boxes. And you're like, oh man, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to be hitting those dishes. But you guys, whatever it is, I don't care if it's sexual. I don't care if it's a work thing. I don't care if it's like, well, you got a double duty. I don't care. You guys figure out stuff that you both go, that's fair. I agree. That'll be a good one if, if, if it goes that direction. Yeah, and then I wouldn't do the dishes on purpose. You'd be like, I'm giving back rubs tonight. 
<laughs> but it's just those kind of things where like you're a team. How do you be a better team? How do you work on it until you guys have kids and then you just make demands that they do the dishes and that's why you make those things, right? <laughs> All right. Ah, goodness. So that was way more than I thought I was going to go into today. Babe, it is pushing 11 o'clock. I went into Prince Charming stuff. That's very funny. In any case, that's your men's coach stuff. I hope that at least some of this has given you a little insight on what's going on with your guy, what's going on with your men. Um, how are we seeing things? Is this is this possible to understand each other a little bit better? Uh, the whole thing here is just trying to make it so that all of us can at least have a damn chance at happiness. And if you want to have a little bit of fun tonight, you and your spouse, go ahead and ask each other, if I never heard of that word before, what's happiness? Have some fun. Or if you want to have a double fun, happiness, and then can you please tell me what love is? We all have different definitions. I'm curious to see what yours would be. All right. I'm getting out of here. My love, I love you. I wish you were here. This was very different without you. And so we'll have to figure out how to make it so we can do at this thing a little better. I don't know what I did wrong. So um, I have learning to do. And then once I learn how to do that, I'll be, uh, I'll be out with my girl or she'll be back from Texas Friday. So then I can have my love next to me again. Any case, thank you guys for being here. Hope you guys are going to be doing better and better with your communication. And uh, for those of you who booked a call with me, book some calls. And if you want to book a call sooner, um, there's a tab underneath that has faster times. My buddy Eddie is fantastic. And he's been taking calls too to see if, um, if we're a good match for jumping in the group. So do that stuff. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys in person. I'm a real dude. And I'll be hanging out with you guys soon. So have a good night. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Appreciate you.